Hey everybody, it's Craig Becky here, and welcome to this Capture One tutorial for beginners. So if you're new to Capture One, then this is a perfect video for you. Make sure you stick around and watch all of the different things that I go through in this video. Also, if you stick around to the end, I'll show you how you can save 10% off new versions of Capture One as well as upgrades. So that'll be at the end of the video. All right, let's get started. So let's have a look at the interface. Now, if you've downloaded the free trial or if you've had it for a while, your version of Capture One may look different than what you're seeing on your screen right now. You can configure Capture One pretty much any way you would like. So let me show you how to do some of those basic configuration adjustments, and then we'll progress from there. And then I'll show you how to do some basic landscape adjustments by the end of this video. All right, so let's get started. So you can see here we have what they call the browser on the right-hand side. Now, if I wanted to adjust the size of these images, you can see here if I just click and hover over it, we have double arrows left and right. I can drag this. So now we have larger thumbnails that we can look at and say, okay, that image looks pretty good. Let's check that out. Now, let's say you had a couple of different images and you wanted to kind of compare them. You can do that in Lightroom. You can do that in Capture One as well. Now, an easy way to do that is we've got this one highlighted. You can see the white box around it if you look in your upper right. Now, all we have to do is click on another image and we can compare that one as well. So I'm going to hold the Command key on the Mac. I'm not sure what the command is on a PC, but I'm going to click on that. Now you can see we have these two images side by side. Now, if I wanted to add a third one, again, I click on the command key and then I've added a third one. And then let's say, okay, I'll add another one. So just by holding that command key and clicking, I can preview these different images. And the more I add, they'll show up on the screen, but they'll get smaller. So I don't like to do more than four at one time, but I could look at these four and I could say, hmm, under these four, I think I like this one. So all we have to do to deselect is the same thing. Click on command, click on the image, it disappears. And then you can see it's highlighted. So we just click on that. It's easy to remember which ones you've clicked on because they're already highlighted with a white box. Now let's say you had a series of images in a row. You could click on the top one here. So that's what we're looking at. If you hold the shift key and click on the bottom one, then it will highlight all four images at once. So I'm gonna click here and you can see my computer's hung up, but there we go. So we have the four images. Now you can see out of these four, we have some red in this image. So I'll walk you through that next. So what we'll do is we'll just de-highlight these. So again, just command and click, those will disappear. And then we'll be left with just the one image here. Now the highlights here are in red. So these are blown out highlights. Now, if you don't have that set, if you look at the top here, the top right, you see this triangle with the orange and the explanation mark. All you have to do is click on that to enable it or click on that to turn it off. Now you can also adjust when this kicks in. So to do that, if you go up here to capture one and you go to preferences, and then if you look at this box right here, exposure. Now you can see here, if I click on defaults, these are the default settings, 250 and zero. So 255 would be the extreme white point. And so they've got 250 right here. And that's when those warnings kick in. If you wanted to kick it in sooner, you could do that, but I usually leave it at default, and then I just sort of adjust by eye. I never really push it that far as far as my exposure. So if we wanted to bring this exposure down, for example, you can see here the exposure tab, it's already at minus 50. So this was from a series of HDR images where I took multiple exposures, that's why it's overexposed, but I could still recover quite a bit of those highlights in Capture One. You can see, although those were saying they're overexposed, I was able to do quite a bit of highlight recovery, although I recommend trying to get a good exposure right off the bat. So anyway, that's how you do that. So let me sort of go through more of this interface. We talked about the browser window on the right-hand side. Now, if you want to move that, you can. If you come up here where it says View, you can see here there's a whole bunch of sections here. Now there's also keyboard shortcuts as well, if you want to familiarize yourself with those. But if we wanted to move that browser window from the right, we can move it to below. So if we go here, place browser below. So if you'd like to have it more like that, you can do that. And then again, too, you can change here by looking at the lower left, you have list mode, where you can see there's a little bit more information about your ISO and your aperture and your shutter speed and focal length and things like that. You could have it that way, or you could have it this way, whatever you're comfortable with, really. I just sort of like to see the image and then I can click on it and I do feel like it gives me a little bit more screen real estate if I have it over on the right. So we go over here, place browser right. And then once you've picked your images and you're not really looking at these, you can just sort of drag this over and make those 
thumbnail smaller, giving you more sort of screen real estate to edit your image with. So that's how I like to have that set up. So let's go back up here to capture one. If we click on that again, you could see that we have different options. We have preferences and we can check for updates and things like that. If we go over to file, you can see we can create a new catalog or a new session. I often create new catalogs versus sessions. And then we can also look at ones that we've opened recently. And then we can close this window. We can import images. We could save as template. So you have a lot of different options here. Also, we can edit with. So if you want to take this image and go to Photoshop, you would click edit with. I'll show you how I do that. I go edit with. And here is where you would set up your basic recipe. So I want to export this in a TIFF format, 16-bit. All you gotta do is click on these boxes and you'll see the options, JPEG, TIFF, PSD, I have TIFF. You can see here we have a choice of 8-bit or 16-bit. If this is a raw 16-bit image, I recommend you export at 16-bit if you're going to Photoshop. And then we have options, zip or uncompressed. And then here's your profile, pro photo being a larger color space. So you have sRGB, which is the color space of the web. You have Adobe RGB, which is a larger color space, or pro photo, which is even larger than that. So these are some of the settings that I use. And if you don't have these, just click on your box here. If you don't see all of these, you can go to show recommend. Just click around and explore it. Show all, for example. So maybe you only see one or two. You go to show all. And then when I click on that, I can see all of it. So just explore the interface. Sometimes things aren't where you think they should be or so just click around and you should be able to find things. So we were back over here. So we are on file. Now, again, you can export images as well and you can export the original or the variant, for example. So let's say we wanted to export an original. Now, again, you would pick the destination. So you'd create a folder where you want to put this. So that way, when you go to look for it, you know where you put it. And then you can also have different image names. So you can adjust that, for example, like if I wanted to go here and say, okay, image name and aperture, you could do personalized things like that when you go to export it. And you can see here, you can include adjustments with your export. So that's how you would export images to a folder. So if you're just doing a few little adjustments in Capture One, and then you want to put it right to a folder, that's how you would do that. So if you go to edit here, you can see we also have different things that we can explore. I'm not going to go through every one of these right now, but here we have view. Now you can show grid and guides. I'll just show you that, for example. So we have a grid. Now also we can control that grid by the upper right. So if I click on that, the grid will disappear. Now you could see here as well, we have a bunch of things here and I'm going to go into all of these things. But anyway, let's go back to view and you could see here we have different things as well. Hide tools, add tools. Now you can also right click and add tools that way as well. So let me show you how that would work. So right here from left to right, this is what we call the tool tab. So you can see here, we have our catalog, we have exposure adjustments, we have color. If you wanted to add a tool to that, you would right click and say add tool tab. Now you can see the ones that are grayed out that are lighter gray, those are already in my tool tab. And then the ones that are in white are ones that I can add. So if I wanted to add that, I would just go add tool tab. I would hit quick and it would add it to that top bar. Now don't confuse that with the add tool feature. So with the add tool feature, regardless of what we have here, we can add additional tools to each tool tab. So let's just go from left to right. This is where I do my exposure settings, but you can drag and drop these. So if you find you use one more than the other and you feel more comfortable with that at the top, so for example, I like to make my exposure adjustments first. So I like to have that. Then I like to adjust my highlight and shadows. And then if you're more comfortable with levels, say you can move that up. So you can configure this interface pretty much any way you want. Now we have the more here. Now, if I wanted to get rid of that, I could just go remove tool more. Now that's only removing that from this tool tab. You can see that we're highlighted in orange up there. That's our exposure tab. I'm adding or removing tools to just this tab. So for example, again, if I wanted to right click, say add tool, I can add the more tool back. I click on there. You can see we have more at the bottom. And let's say I use it often. I can drag it up to the top. We have our tool tabs and then we have our tools within each tab and we can move those tools around. So I suggest setting this up the way you work. 
So for example, I have all of my images on the left in the catalog. Then I like to do my exposure adjustments first. Then I like to do my color adjustments, fine tuning my white balance. So I have it set up that way. Now also then you can do some lens corrections if you'd like. So maybe you like to do your lens corrections first. However you wanna do that, you can set up these tool tabs from left to right so that you can work in a logical order, whatever you feel comfortable with. Now also here is where we have layers. So you can see the brush, that's layers. We can work on different layers, for example. Let's just make some basic adjustments to this image and then we'll add a layer and make adjustments to that. So let's get started. So we'll pick one here that is close to being where I want it, just right out of the box. Here we are, we're on our exposure tab. We've got our histogram at the top. On the far left is the darks. On the far right is the brights. It's a pretty even exposure. You can see right here, there's an adjustment made to that. Now what I can do is we have this sort of backwards arrow to the left. If I click on that, that'll reset that. But we also have that at the top. Now if I hit that, that'll take all adjustments and that will zero it right to the beginning. So any adjustments we've made in the different tool tabs, that will take them all out. So here we are starting from scratch. We've got our base exposure. You can see the information is at the bottom. So this was shot at an ISO 64, at 1 1 25th, at F8 at 16 millimeters. So you can find your information about the shot at the bottom left. We'll make a small adjustment. So I think if anything, I could probably maybe bring that exposure down a bit. I can also do that in a layer. So I'll show you that in a second where I just bring the sky down. Now I'll bring my highlights down a bit. So if you drag it to the right, you can see the highlights come down. So you can't really go left with these adjustments. You can only go right. So I'll go to about, let's say 20. Now I can't bring my shadows down, but I can bring them up now again by just going to the right. So you can see I can bring the shadows up. I'll bring those up just a little bit, maybe five. Those are the basic exposure adjustments that I make to all of my images. Just basically the exposure and then the highlight and the shadow. Now I like to work in Capture One and Photoshop on certain images, but if I'm only working in Capture One, then I'll make a contrast adjustment as well. If I'm going to Photoshop later, I'll often just do the contrast adjustment in Photoshop. But let's just bring in a little contrast. You can see how that's affecting the image. I think it could use a little bit of contrast. I don't want to go too crazy with that. Also, we could do some clarity, which is a form of sharpening. You could see here, all you have to do is click on a box and then you could see the different options. You can see we have natural, we have punch, we have neutral, and classic. I like the natural. And then of course, to add clarity or perceived sharpness, we go to the right. To add a little bit of blur, you go to the left. So we can add a little bit of sharpness there. We'll just say eight. And then you have your structure control. And then you can see here, that sort of really kind of sharpens things. I don't really like to use the structure control too much, but let's just say we'll give it, say like a one. So we've made some adjustments. Now, if I want it to go back, you see we have that backwards arrow. Now, if I want it to go back just on the clarity, not all my adjustments, I can do that. Or if I want to preview my adjustment, I would hold the Option key or the Alt key on the PC, hold that down, click on that backwards arrow. It shows you what it looks like before you made your adjustment, and then you let it go, and then it shows you what it looks like with your adjustment. So that's the Option key or the Alt key on the PC. That'll allow you to preview your adjustments. And then if you say, you know what, I liked it better the other way, I just click on that backwards arrow and it zeroes that out. So you can zero that out and go back to wherever you were, always by just clicking on that backwards arrow for each of these tools. If you wanna do it for the whole image, so say you've adjusted your exposure in this tab and you've adjusted your white balance here and you're like, ah, I'm just starting from scratch. You can just click there and it all goes back to the beginning. We covered how to do some exposure adjustments. Going to the right gets brighter, going to the left, it gets darker. We talked about how to add your highlight indicator so that you can see if there's blown out areas. We talked about the dynamic range, the highlight and the shadow. Now let's go over to our next tab, which is our color tab. So you can see here, I have color balance, but again, I could just close these or open these by clicking on those little greater than signs and I can drag these around. So configure this however you like. If you find yourself making certain adjustments first, then put it at the top and then sort of work your way down, set it up so that you have a comfortable workflow. So I have mine set up for base characteristics. It's a Nikon D850, that's what I shot it on. I have the basic curve, but like other parts of Capture One, whenever there's a box like this with the arrows on the right, you can click on the box and you can see what the other options are. You can explore different curves. So these are different preset curves for your image. And you may find 
that you like film high contrast over the auto curve. If that's closer to what you want your finished image to look like, then why not start there? So you could set it like that. I'll just go back to auto. But again, if you wanted to say compare it, so we'll go film high contrast. We look at our backwards arrow. We hold the option key on the Mac, alt on the PC. We click on that. Now we can compare auto to film high contrast. So you could say, wow, that almost looks like exactly how I want it. <laughs> so anyway, you can do that. That's sort of the preview feature. So what I would do too is I shot this in auto white balance. And if I wanted to compare, say, how it looked with a different white balance, I just click on the box like all the other boxes. And I could say, well, how would it look if I shot it with this setting, sunny? Or let's say I shot it with flash. And you can see these adjustments are being made for you. So that's the Kelvin, K-E-L-V-I-N. That's the temperature and then the tint. Now you can also adjust these by going left, we'll cool it down, going right, we'll warm it up. You can adjust these manually just by sliding these sliders. Or you can choose these custom settings to get you sort of in the ballpark. And you can say, well, there was a bit of cloud. How does that look like compared to how I shot it? So you can see I shot it at 5386 with a tint of 2.1. But let's say I go to cloudy and I say, okay, well, let's compare it. So the option key or alt, backwards arrow, that's how I shot it, and that's how it would look like if it was cloudy. And you might find that you like somewhere in the middle. So you could say, well, 5386, 59, let's go with 5600. So it's easier sometimes to just highlight the box, type it in, and say 5600, and there's my tint. Do I want to go a little more green, or a little more magenta, or am I happy with the zero? And let's say we go with about one. I'll go a little bit to the right. So you can make those adjustments. And then if you don't like it again, you just hit the backwards arrow or again, holding the option or alt, clicking here, comparing the before and after. So those are some base adjustments. So those are the basic adjustments that I make. I usually make an exposure adjustment, uh, maybe a little contrast if I'm not going to Photoshop, highlight and shadow, and then I'll go over and I'll fine tune the white balance. Now you can fine tune the white balance if you shot it in RAW. If you shot it in JPEG, you can't make those white balance adjustments. So it's always a good idea to shoot in RAW. That gives you some latitude when it comes to post if you want to change your white balance. Now let's cover one more thing. So we have the ability to add layers. So we were on the background layer. Now if I want to add another layer, so say I want to just do something to a layer, I'm going to click here and we see we have layer one. Now if I click on that, I could say top gradient. So I'm going to add a gradient to this and I'll call this one top gradient. So now I'm working on this layer. Now you can see up here, if you look at the top, we have sort of what looks like a square with a little sort of half something there. If I hit B on my keyboard, then we just have a brush. Now if I hit G on my keyboard, now I have the gradient tool. That's the easiest way to do it. Now all I have to do is drag and drop from the top. You see how if I get close to the image, I have that plus symbol. Now I can drag here, but now I can go left or I can go right. If I want a straight gradient, so straight, I hold the shift key on my keyboard and that keeps it straight. So I'll drag it down and now you can't see anything. So if I hit the M key, that'll show the mask that we have. So if you thought, oh, I want this a little bit lower, I didn't go quite far, what we could do is we could go back or we could just get rid of this whole thing. So for example, I could hit delete on this right here, I highlight on it, delete, that's gone. I could say, let's just start over. So now I've got that layer one, we'll just call it top for now. And now I've got my mask enabled. So to see that you hit the M key, M. We have our G key for gradient, M for mask. And then I'm gonna hit the shift key and I'm gonna drag this gradient down. So you could see also too where that's falling. You can see how at the very bottom it's white. So just sort of have a look at that. Now, when I drop that, we can see that we have more of the sky where it gets to the mountains. Now I can make adjustments to this so I can change the exposure. So I'm going to hit the M key again so that we can see what we're doing. Now you can see here, I have exposure adjustments right here. I'm on the top layer. This is only going to affect the top layer, these adjustments. Now I can bring down the exposure in the sky. So darkening the sky a little bit. Now, if I want it to sort of darken the bottom, say I thought the foreground was too bright. I'll do the opposite. I'll create a new layer. I'll call this one bottom. I'm going to click on here and just say bottom. And I'm going to make adjustments to this. So this is highlighted in orange. So now I'm going to take my gradient tool. So I'm on G and I'm going to just drag it up, hold shift. I see the little plus symbol. I come up to about here. And now I can add that 
just drag down that exposure a little bit. So I've darkened the bottom and the top. Now I can toggle either of these on or off and say, well, you know, did that gradient make a difference? Do I need it? Do I not? So I have these on different layers so I can do different things with it. Now there's a lot more into Capture One. I don't want to go too long with this video, but I'll do more videos on Capture One in the future. Let me know in the comment section below what you'd like me to cover in future Capture One tutorials. Just post a little comment in the comment section below. So earlier I mentioned if you're on the trial or you're thinking of getting a new version of Capture One or upgrading to a newer version of Capture One, you can use the promotional code AMBCRAIG, AMBCRAIG to save 10%. So when you check out, you would just put that in the promotional code. I'm not sure if they call it that or the voucher code or the coupon code, but if you punch that in on checkout, that will save you 10% on future versions of Capture One. All right, well, thanks for watching this video. If you have any comments or questions, you can post them down below. I'll also put that coupon code and a link to the free 30-day trial of Capture One in the description box below this video. To see that, look below the video. You'll see something that says show more. If you click on that, that will open up the description box. There you'll see the download link for the free trial of Capture One. And then also you'll see my promotional code AMBCRAIG. That will save you 10%. All right, thanks for watching this video. Any comments or questions, post them down below. If you like this video, you found it helpful, give me a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, just click on subscribe and then hit that bell notification and you'll be notified of future videos that I release and I release new videos every week. All right, I'll see you in the next video.